All right. So, hello, guys. Welcome back. We finally found the name. Welcome to the Curious Canvas. That's the one. That's it. So pretty much what we'll be talking about is our core, and what we talk about is wrestling, movies, documentaries, and gaming. That's our core, but we branch out. Yeah. What, what the canvas means to us is when we talk about wrestling, wrestling there's a wrestling mat which pretty much in our in our language it's like a canvas same as a ring yeah any ring like um ufc ring boxing ring or canvas topped that's yeah that's that's what it is um and obviously canvas can also transition to art which is movies gaming and documentaries so that's the curious canvas yeah it's definitely art and you know we, we were look thinking of something like behind the cam oh sorry underneath the canvas under the canvas just so that because we're like dissecting and trying to go behind the scenes of all the things that we watch. But yeah, definitely. And curiosity is definitely one that I kept trying to put out to, um, to PK about how, you know, as kids, you're always so curious. You're always asking questions. Your, mm. your, your love and your passion for one little thing, like say Disney or say uh, games, or you're, you're so curious about these things that if you wanted an answer to it, you'd do everything yeah. In your power to get, and, and you even stretch out that question too. Just like, oh, how, like, uh, um, like when you ask about wrestling, like, what about the background story? Yeah, of this? yeah, 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 yeah. So that's that's it. Well, what we've got, curious canvas, and I think it works very well for the both of us in what we're trying to do here. I love the name. It's good. Yeah, I like it. good job. I'm glad we finally got it in episode four. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, we're here though. We're here. That's the main yeah. thing. So uh, one thing that I want to talk about because you actually got me onto it. Uh, for Backlash, yeah. Edge versus Christian, title the greatest wrestling match. Yeah, I was posting it the day before it even happened. I only saw it on, was it Bleacher Report Wrestling or mm. WWE's I, yeah, Instagram? I saw it and I was like, okay, I'm going to repost this because this looks cool. Mm. It looks like Ruthless Aggression era. It really was. So when I, so when they were building up to the match, yep. I really, I when they said like the, greatest wrestling match yeah, i'm not gonna like, lie i was just on. like yeah, you yeah. guys i'm mean, like edge hasn't wrestled that much he's only had one match since he's um yeah. came back he's returned yeah, yeah, yeah. randy randy's always on point but he's kind of slowed down in the years which mm. fair enough like mm. i think he's like what almost hitting 40 no he's 40 now 40 now because okay. i uh, saw that he's like i'm gonna wrestle for another 10 years oh it can happen it can so. happen so that yeah so when i'm looking <laughs> when i'm looking at this i'm thinking that yeah, it's it's gonna be an okay match. Like yeah. you know, WrestleMania was good, but like it's gonna be an okay match. Yeah, I was wrong. It was an amazing it was match. Great. It was so good. I felt like Edge didn't lose a step, and even Randy, I felt like he just picked up his game. Uh. Like I think because they've always had great great matches together. They gr they've always had great chemistry, being part of Rated RKO. I so I'm that, guessing yeah. they've already got it there. They were just. Mm. It was just, you You were just a bit eerie about their age and yeah. how long, yeah, like you said about Edge's um, ring rust, but no, nah, it was not there at all, the ring rust. I, I loved it. Like, even just the story they were telling in that ring, yeah. like, you could tell that they were bringing back, like, him just, like, focusing on his neck injury, yeah. uh, Randy focusing on that shoulder injury that he used yeah. to have. I thought it was so they good. They were targeting it. Yeah, even, even at the very start when just, like, how fast they were going, I was like, Okay, when when did this happen? <laughs> when did this happen? Yeah. Um, and I loved how they brought back kind of old old school moves, like people like R. Yeah, R. P. Eddie, the yeah, yeah. When they brought Eddie Guerrero, oh, I remember like oh, so I was t I remember I was texting you this part. So when they uh, when uh, Randy looked up and then he started, I'm like, what's happening here? Then he started <laughs> doing starting the three amigos. He only hit the second suplex before yeah. the reversal, but then with um. But then, and then I'm like, oh, bro, he's going to hit. Because I'll just message you midway through it. I'm like, he's going to hit the frog splash. <laughs> and, then, and then like Edge, then Edge um, reversed it. And then you just see the cross faces, the angle slams. Um, uh, rock bottom. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The pedigree. Oh, bro, that was crazy. Yeah, yeah. It was a great one-on-one -on -one wrestling match without all the other, um, what, what do you call it? Without all the other... Uh, it was it was great because there was no crowd. Even without the crowd, they were still able to bring it home. Mm. You know what's funny? So yeah, I, um, with the crowd. So I I'm not I don't feel like they're real. Like in the in the actual crowd, I feel like they're being paid in the oh, crowd. Those guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you know because I haven't watched it in a while, so I wouldn't know the new guys. I mm. thought they were the, just the the uh, like the NXT guys. The yeah, 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 NXT and. The, the roster, I thought they were just like, let's get the roster out and just, who are they? 
just I random. Th- I think it's just random. The reason why I say like the reason why I say like it's scripted because it feels like isn't the crowd. It's because it feels like. You, do you remember playing like Raw versus SmackDown? And like the crowd is just like you know it's just like yeah they're just there yeah they're just like the yeah, 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 yeah yeah you know yeah, yeah just like or like boo and yeah, I'm yeah. like that's what they're doing I'm like they don't really hear that from a real crowd like you do but like it's a different cheer yeah, yeah, and I'm yeah. just like no I'm, I'm not, that's, it was made, just making me laugh like watching it no it's because you can hear a person like you can hear the yeah that's not like all the one yeah yeah, yeah yeah um I don't like the fake crowd though especially yeah. if there isn't such a big crowd um. I I like that they do have. I'm not gonna lie though. I do like it's better than nothing, like mm. the, uh, with the crowd. Yes, yes, it's a, definitely it's a scripted crowd in my That's eyes. T- mm. Yeah, well, I, I'm different because I've told you about how when I watch UFC mm. or when you know I've said this on uh, the other podcast where the NRL is doing crowd noises as well, and I don't like it because it's very gimmicky. Oh, you, what do you mean crowd noises? So I can have a yeah, yeah. Yeah, so in at the N- in the NRL, they mm. they're playing games with no crowd in a big stadium, but they've got the sound effects too, like yeah, like oh, cheer, that's crowd yeah, cheering yeah, and stuff. Yeah. So I don't like it because it's gimmicky, and I said I don't I don't want it at all for the NBA when the NBA comes back on because they're playing with no crowds as well. Yeah. Um, it, it does sound very gimmicky. It I did want to hear Randy say shit to Orton, or like mm. in the NBA, that's what I want. I want you know, LeBron sa- coming at Patrick Beverly and going like, you're a punk ass. Yeah, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Like, I want to hear that. Like, when, when they're talking shit to each other. So yeah. I didn't like the whole gimmicky. Oh, fair, fair. Time crowd, but yeah. I like that. One thing that's a bit weird for me. So I love Randy at the heel. I think he's probably the greatest heel. He's a great heel. That's why I was going to ask you. Yeah. I, I, I love him as a heel. Even as a face, you love him as well. Yeah. I, I wanted to ask you. It's it's crazy because remember we had this on episode one where we talked about who is the guy right now or mm-hmm. compared to like a Stone Cold, The Rock, you know, generational yes. talent. Yeah. What is holding Randy Orton back from being the guy that translates out into W um, outside of wrestling? Because he has the wrestling. Yeah. He has the mic skills. Yeah. He has the championships and accolades. Yeah, yeah. What is it that's holding him back? From being from from when you look at Stone Cold, The Rock, John Cena, you have to put that in it as well. John Cena, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think they're like very likable. I like I, I love Randy Orton, and I feel like when you're a fan, you love him and you appreciate yeah, yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know if he's likable because even like mm-hmm. uh, when you look at um the ruthless uh the ruthless aggression um the documentary, yeah, right. Um, when you're watching that on WWE Network. He, he, like, even when, like, uh, Triple H had kept putting him to the side, like, man, you have everything. We're yeah, giving yeah, you everything. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're killing this momentum for yourself. Yeah, yeah, by doing stupid shit. Yeah, yeah, like, literally, like, when he's in a crowd or something, he was, like, literally push a guy randomly and just, like, he sees the camera. Like, it's just, I don't think he's likable as a person in real life. So, uh, he's real, he's real, uh, him as a real person is just, like. It's kind of a douche. He's kind of a douchey guy. Is, like, hey. like, you respect his skills. I think this goes with any sport. You can yeah. respect someone's skills, but. As a person, oh. you're kind of a douche. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. There's a lot of people that. Are it's like, like John that. Jones. Like I like I love John Jones. That's as what a I was gonna say. Yeah, I was, I was trying to think who who outside of wrestling in different sports is kind of like that. Like John Jones could have been much bigger. Mm. Chris Brown could have been much bigger than he is, but yeah. due to his um past, yeah, like he could have been on MJ level. He could be in movies. He yeah. could be on Tupac level, mm. but because of things that. Um, from his past has hindered him, same as John Jones. And I'm not judging them at all. I'm just saying that, yeah, the likability. You're right. You're right there. From because there was a question yesterday: um, Is Randy Orton the greatest of all time wrestler? Mm-hmm. And I was looking at it, and I'm like, well, he's got everything. He 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 he's up there. Like he he's not done yet. But yeah. in the next ten years, are we gonna look back and go, yeah, he's the greatest of all time? But then you're like. But I think there's always there's also levels le- levels like when I na- when you name Stone Cold, The Rock, and John Cena, they're on a different level. Like mm. Undertaker is an icon, but I think he's just he's a step below yeah, 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 that. Yeah. Like, and that's yeah. I think that's he's a very he's with like a Triple H. Yeah, I think that's a really rare thing to have. Yeah. Like Randy Orton, I think he's on the level of Triple H and yeah. the Undertaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Me too. But he's not yeah. to, to get to the Rock's level and John mm. Cena and Stone Cold. That's hard. 
I that's think that's true. hard for anyone. That's true. And I think a lot of people keep um, putting that, putting everyone into that bubble, like what's missing. And like, I think that's just a wa- rare quality. Yeah. I don't know if Vince, I don't know if Vince can put someone in that position. They, they yeah. tried to a Roman Reigns, didn't happen, you know? But I think it, it can happen. Just let it be. Let, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I think you've hit the nail on the head there with, um, with the, what you're saying about Randy, how he's actually, his real, p- real attitude and personality is not as likable as it. The Rock or yeah, the Stone Cold, but yeah, he is he is one of the greats. But definitely, I don't think he's one of the greatest of all time. There is that likability factor that is it's holding him back. It's like Triple H. Triple H. Do you remember when he bre- uh, tried reaching out into acting? Do you remember Blade Blade's Trinity? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it wasn't, wasn't it wasn't horrible. Yeah, but it wasn't great. Yeah, it was like it's forgettable. Yeah. Um, I think. Because he's not really I don't, like tri- Triple H. You respect him, but I don't know if he's that likable quality where it's like that star power. Mm. You know, like in wrestling, you appreciate these uh, like these legends. Like Chris Jericho, I love Chris Jericho. He's a le- he's a legend to me. Is he on that level of The Rock and everything? No, like he's he's interesting to watch. Even still, up to this day, he's all, he's pretty much pushing fifty almost. Mm. He's still he's still charismatic as, um, on a whole nother level, but just doesn't reach that. Who do you th- who do you think's the greatest um heel? Greatest heel of all time. That's a lot of people, yeah. right? Um, Randy Orton's good. Same same as Chris Jericho, and The Rock is a great heel too. I I gotta disagree with that. He's a great heel. The reason why he's too likable for me. Yeah, yeah. When yeah. he became when he came back, uh, but him as a when he portrays a heel, and you're just like, oh, I love yeah. He's fucking. He's good so good. This. Yeah. He's so fucking good at this, but and you still love him. That's how great he was. Yeah, he was great at that. Like being, you're meant to be the bad guy, but we still love you. Like that's yeah, yeah, you yeah. I got that. I think I don't know. I think Randy. He's I don't know when he plays the bad guy because he's such a douche in real life. Yeah, it just, just transitions. So I go like, I don't like this. Guy. I don't. Know, I don't like this guy. It's like um, I don't know. In UFC, I never liked Henry Cejudo. Oh yeah, he's, but I can go into that as well. I don't like him as well. Yeah, but I don't know it, if that's just his gimmick. It is, I think he is, it is. But it's even just so annoying. Yeah. But he's got us. He's got our attention. That's all yeah, that yeah. you do with gimmicks. But he's winning as well. Mm. Uh, you can't, uh, oh, know. yeah, yeah. I could never say anything about his. But I don't like him calling himself the greatest. Because you, you're not supposed to call yourself the greatest. You, you let other people. So th- um, I read somewhere... Oh, it was on, I can't remember where it was, but I read somewhere that they're trying to sign even just for one match at WrestleMania, Conor McGregor in wrestling. They've done that with Mayweather. So like you can kind of see McGregor transitioning to that. Do you see any UFC fighter bouncing to wrestling as in, and like that can stick with it? Cain Velasquez. Yep. There he um, Who's big right now? Who, who, who's a heavyweight? I could see DC. I could see DC. Oh, DC. Yeah, yeah, DC. yeah, definitely. He's got the charisma charisma as well he's got the wrestling yeah. background he doesn't have the look that Vince is looking for that's but a, it will still work that's same as Kane uh, when in Kane um, this no, was on Kane's uh, different nah Kane, Kane he's huge yeah bro. yeah yeah he's, he's tall and yeah. he's got big muscles no nah. um, yeah Do you DC feel like would be like Rusev the guy that just got released yeah I liked Rusev yeah he's gone now yeah. I just saw that mm, that's sad there's yeah. a lo- there was a bunch of people that was um, released in wrestling when when the whole COVID nineteen happened, but they're signing people again because they're scared of like these people going to AEW. They probably will. Yeah, competition's see good. I could see it happening, but it's good though. Like that's how I think that's how you got the rocks, the Stone Codes, because you had so much competition because everyone you was leaving to WCW. You have to participate. You have to go harder. You have to go harder, just like when WWE uh, had. SmackDown versus Raw. Yeah. And everyone was like trying to... It was real, real competition though. It was, it was real good. competition. Competition's good, always. Would you prefer though, SmackDown or... I Raw? was a SmackDown guy. Yeah, same. Yeah. Yeah, same. I was a SmackDown guy, knowing that The Rock started SmackDown. Yeah. Did you like um, Edge as a babyface? Uh, n- I didn't like Edge at all during the whole Ruthless Aggression era. I never liked him. Really? He was not likable to... The, 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 so he, 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 like I he found he him cringe. But yeah. when he came back, or even towards the end when he was finishing, and then and then when he came back, I was like, you know, looking back, he represents that that time, and we were really into it. Yeah, I don't know. I uh, so when I was, I liked him as a heel. When he came back, being a babyface, 
I like him, but I like him more as a ba- uh, heel. Because yeah, it's yeah. just so, he just like there's certain people that you just love to hate. Yeah. You know? He's one of them. Yeah, yeah. It's 100%. like, it's like uh, oh, actually, you know what? Triple H, no, nah, I like him as a baby face and heel. But I think he kind of earned that. But when he was younger, like in the Ruthless Aggression, especially in the Ruthless Aggression stage, I never liked Triple H. I'm like, why is this guy always winning? Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. I never liked it. it, it was, yeah. Things like that always happen. It's weird. Or I J- never liked Roger Federer in tennis. And then now, looking back, um, even now when he's playing, I'm like, I want him to win. It's just weird. I, I'm like that. Mm. I don't know what happens. but Did you end up checking out The Undertaker Chapter 4? Yes. Episode 4. Um, they started off with... It was parts of WWF Attitude Era. They were showing his old clips yeah. with um, Paul Bearer mm. and how hard he worked for... Um, promos mm-hmm. where he wouldn't just want to do a shoot in one go. He would, you know, he would stay there all night to get it perfect. I think it was in a real graveyard too. Yeah, yeah, real graveyard. That's crazy. Yeah, um, I think I love. I think I love how like the guy, uh, the main guy, is like he wants to stay in the, like a real graveyard the whole night just to finish the shoot. Yeah, um, and everyone saw how hard he worked, and he never went away from his character or his gimmick. Yeah, I love it when Stone Cold was like. Um, so when take a, the first match, sorry, the second match with Shawn Michaels yep. and Shawn okay. Michaels left after that. Cause he got, you know, uh, yep. him, he won the match. Um, undertake undertaker was like, I should have left with you. Yeah. And we wouldn't, we wouldn't have got that Brock Lesnar moment if he left at that time. Yeah. What do you think? Sh- Cause when you look at the matches that he's had recently with the, when him and Kane versus DX and that was terrible. even, that was a, t- that was a trash match. And this breaks my heart because I loved Goldberg at the time. Yeah, that was terrible. That was that was scary yeah. for both of them. Are you just like, stop. What do you think should have been in his last match? Um, Shawn Michaels is definitely one. Yeah, I would have definitely rolled in the sunset there. Yeah, I think I think we, we said this last week that when he versus Shawn Michaels that last time, mm-hmm. they should have just gone and, set and put it. He should have left his hat and his, his yeah. gloves and his coat in middle ring and walked out with Shawn Michaels and that was it. That would have been good. Do you think the AJ Styles match deserves it the last match? No. Because I mean... Because there was no crowd. You can't do that to us, to to the fans. Yeah. Um, at the same time, yeah, th- it was like a... It wasn't in a wrestling ring, mm-hmm. right? It was in... It no, was no, like no, no. It was just, it was just like, like, yeah, it was in a barn. Yeah, it was in a barn. Um, no, we... I don't know. It, sh- I don't know how it's going to end. How's it gonna end? I, I get the rock out. <laughs> I know, like <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know. It has to be, like I think. W- so when John Cena came back, you know, and had like a vi- like that small match between him WrestleMania? and WrestleMania. Yeah, WrestleMania. Yeah, when, like uh, come back. And then yeah, the second, the second New Orleans. Yeah. I think every, I think everyone um, thought that was gonna be his last match because he's John Cena. Yeah, it's John Cena. That made that would have made sense. Yeah, that the crowd, the crowd was there too. Yeah. Um, but right now though, I, I I don't know a match. Randy Orton, the legend killer. That would be good. Let's go. That would be good. Let's go, Vince. Let me message Vince. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's that's the full legend killer. Like he finally did it at WrestleMania. Yeah, he just beat he just beat Edge right Edge. now. So if you Let's if you pu- if you push Let's Randy, go. push Randy yeah, like to get all the way bigger. to all the way to Let's WrestleMania. That, that makes sense. That. Yes. That's, like, that's smart. I like that. I was that. just like, who, who, who's big talent now? Nah, we he did Brock and Brock. Even when Brock won, what did it do for both of them? Not really much. Uh, nah. Because Brock I'll didn't... Brock was always a big star. Yeah, he, was was always a he was always a big star. He was already star. a big star. Mm. Wait, did it really push him and catapult him to legendary status? I don't know. It was just known as he's the one that beat Undertaker. No, but I feel like... So after that match, so he came back, I think, a year or two before that, right? And he was only doing some matches. Yeah. When he beat Undertaker, they pushed him to be like undefeated because he was he lost to triple h i think the wrestlemania prior to that Mm. he's lost to um john cena before as well like as in the return yeah uh, but after ufc yeah and when after he beat taker it just he won every match and like i definitely think it pushed him to be a giant star because you're still paying attention to him Mm. if brock was losing like here and there you'd stop kind of watching. I know yeah. it's uh, like, you know, it's just, I get you. but they portrayed him as the beast. No one can beat him. Mm. You know, he, he literally beats people like soup. He takes people to suplex city and then, um, yeah, wins the t- every title. 
I think that's because of what what Taker has done with that loss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how I look at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like at the, for sure, at the, at the time, I'm sure that's what they wanted yeah. from it. Yeah, at the time when we watched it, I thought that was complete bullshit. I'm like, why the f- and like let him let him like let him like ride out th- with an undefeated streak. Yeah, you know. It, and I reckon they should have done that. They should just kept it. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, like, no one else. Yeah, is you gonna wanted to push Lesnar, and then. Well, no one else is going to get that. I mean, you look at any star. John Cena can't do it. He's already lost at WrestleMania. Um, Brock, he's lost at WrestleMania. There's unless you twenty s- years. How are you going to yeah, keep I'll someone there for twenty years anyway? And you d- and you don't even know how that's going to fall out with that person. You could yeah. like let's just say Seth Rollins, just for example. You could have brought Seth Rollins. He's over for that first two years. Oh, he's amazing. I love him. But then he might dip. He might fall off a little bit, and then that's when he gets a loss. Yeah. You know, it's the same with um, I think Rand, like like Randy Orton, he had like a mini streak at one stage. It wasn't that much. It was like probably like I think it was four years undefeated at WrestleMania, mm. but then he lost because he he dipped. And then, and and obviously it worked. Obviously it worked with the story as well. Yeah, but yeah, let's stick to our guns and say Randy Orton. I like that so That'd much. Be cool, the yeah. return of the legend killer. Yeah, because like you know what, it's and that's the ultimate. And they started now because he's a really big heel now, and it's working. Yeah. Like what he did with Edge. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, I'm curious if they're gonna have a third match. Mm-hmm. They did one at WrestleMania. They did one at Backlash. They probably will. Yeah, they probably will. But um, a retire like a retire match thing for, uh, for Edge. Yeah, but um. Yeah, no, let's get uh, let's get Randy Orton versus Undertaker, the legend killer, and then let him ride in the sunset. Maybe even he he still can't beat him and then Undertaker can finally be at WrestleMania, just leave, you know? Like yeah. he, he still can't beat him. He can't the legend killer can't beat the Undertaker. That's how great he is and he goes. Yeah. It'd be a great match. I love uh, All right, Triple H. You hear that? I hope it gets us. Book it in. It's the last match too. Oh. Just make sure you credit the curious canvas when it happens. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag the curious canvas. Yeah. I have a question for you. Like, just during these conversations, do you have many wrestling friends? Like, oh I yeah, no, no. You know what? You know what's crazy? So since me and you have been going, um, been doing this, and then we, uh, I've told people that I'm with my audio guy. Shout, <laughs> uh, shout out, Pete, Peter Moses. Peter's a good name. Yeah, he um, he works for a audio company, and he's been helping me out when I had to edit a few of my other. Um, things on Start Summer Media. Mm-hmm. And he's a huge wrestling fan. He has WWE Network and he trains at the gym at Full Force. And we talk about it in the mornings and I go, did you watch Edge? Did you watch um, oh, Edge? Yeah, yeah, like, and then it's crazy because one time me and him were just talking about it and then I was telling other people and it's crazy because for years I've kind of held it back. Yeah. After high school, I held it back. But I was talking out loud and then you know, Francis and then another guy from the gym and then even Mark, like one of the other boys from the gym. They're all talking about how they used to watch wrestling and then it just became a full-on wrestling conversation at the yeah. gym. And I'm like, you know, and it started from me just starting the conversation of I, I'm I'm back, I'm getting back into wrestling. But yeah, I do have some friends plus all the other ones growing up. Like you know, I tried to get Carl, talk to Carl about it. But yeah, I do have friends that still watch it. I think um, I think there's a lot. Joe Boy. I think there's a lot of people that used to watch it or still do watch it, but it's not a conversation not gets brought same. up. It's you not know? the same anymore. Plus, we can always go back to the days. Yeah. Uh, and Sarosh and Shardad, um, they we talk about. It. I got um got them on WWE Network. Yeah. And we, yeah, we we talk about and we talk about like legendary things that happen and you know like the not the gimmicks but like the the sayings and we'll talk we'll yeah. add that into our conversation yeah but yeah do you have any friends I have, a, I have a few friends there was one guy that was um wrestling for i think it was awf the one here yeah the one in yeah, i had one out he um nathan castle from high school as well but yeah yeah, yeah. I th- I, and i remember when i met him it was just like we just got in depth about wrestling and it just broke it down on levels and i love yeah. that or even when like you know when sometimes you're at the gym or like know, someone's just tired from leg day and they're on the ground so you just go like you got like then you get on top and you just like just start, do the people's elbow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, um, I have a couple of friends, but I feel like a lot of people you have to start the conversation. Start the conversation. Like you know, water cooler talk where it's just like, oh, did you hear what happened last week? Yeah, did you yeah. Wa- yeah. You don't really hear wrestling. I feel like unless you really you force the conversation. Yeah. Like say, I've been watching this. Yeah. yeah. I've been watching um, the Dockers on Vice or WWE Network. Yeah. But yeah, I'm. I want to be the guy that no. Nah. <laughs> 
we want to be the team that gets the conversations going again. Is that it? The, that water cooler talk cool. again, yeah. Yes, and then Randy Orton versus Undertaker. <laughs> <laughs> you hear it here first. You hear it here first. <laughs> but yeah, um, I do have some friends, and it you can't, you can't like. It was it was a big part of my childhood, so I can't just like blank it out. Yeah, and some of yeah, yeah, it's but fun. Yeah. Like it's good entertainment. Well, oh, it's <laughs> fake, bro. You try getting power bomb through a table. And like onto the concrete, like outside. You try lift a hundred kilo, hundred twenty kilo guy, and then slam him. You try and jump off at hundred twenty kilos off the corner into another man's body, and then he puts his knee up, <laughs> and bro, see if that doesn't do oh, your ribs in. Oh, bro! Even when like I, I can't, I don't know how, I don't know okay, how high he was. You know when like um when Shane, Shane McMahon climbed the hell in the cell and he jumped off, to, and he jumped it's off like to hit the table. Twenty meters or something, 15, 20 meters. How, I don't know how you can fake that. I'm like, it's not fake. It's um. Yes, it's scripted. It's like so. If I ever catch any of you go to the theater or go to the cinema, yeah, I'll I'll I'll, sh- I'll call you out for being fake as well because that's scripted, just like us watching um, wrestling. And, and it gives you real feelings. Like you see, I tagged you in this thing on Instagram where this little kid was just saying, like saying, "I love you to Rey Mysterio." I'm like, you could you felt that like that, and that's it. like it oh, yeah, it, yeah, g- yeah. it gives you that type of feeling, or like when you hate this person, um, like Randy. Randy's like the perfect example, like. Fuck, oh fuck, I don't like this guy. Yeah. You know, like, I hope this guy beats him. Like, yeah. it, it gives you that feeling. Yeah. It's like a Marvel movie. Yeah, or like, it's uh, like a mo- that's what I'm saying. It's entertainment. People, um, the strikes might not, might not be thing, might not be like solid, but. Well, that's a hit. They're feeling it. They're feeling it. Those slaps would hurt. I know that for sure. Um, the, one, the one thing I do want to say about the Randy Orton and um, Edge match, and we said this in the kind of in the first episode where what's missing. And you, c- I felt like that match was feeling. There was no, there was no flips or anything. There were no like it was just wrestling. Yeah, yeah, it was just wrestling. But you could imagine that match with the crowd at WrestleMania. Oh yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, that could have been the greatest match of all time. Maybe. Yeah, maybe, maybe it's it's de- it's the, definitely was good. Time, it was great. Yeah, it was great. Like, um, Drew McIntyre had like an interview and he was talking about like they asked him like what can't you wait for like um when the crowds arrive again. He's like. I just want to know the feeling of being a champion with, with people crowd, around. Yeah. Like right now, like, yeah, I'm feeling love on the int- online and everything, but I just want that roaring crowd. Cause that's when you know if you're over or not. Right. You reckon he'll, he'll be a champ while the, cr- when the crowd comes back or they're going to take it off. I don't want him to take it off. I <laughs> like Drew. I like Drew. Yeah, he's cool. You know, Shout out Drew McIntyre. And like you've seen um, when he first came out in the ruthless aggression era, I mean, he looked t- like yeah, he wasn't, yeah. he wasn't built like he is now. Uh, I remember, um, there was something they released some guy on sexual assault charges this this I saw it this morning. Um, I don't know his name. He was from NXT, and then someone goes, "Oh, look, Vince doesn't know what to do with cruiserweights again." But like, it's hard to do things with cruiserweights. Yeah, you know? it like is. Even even the crowds. Even if you don't want to admit it, everyone wants to see the huge big dude as a champ. Except for Rey Mysterio. Except for I was gonna say yeah. like no no I'm not gonna be like and no Eddie Guerrero. Oh, but he's he's really big. But like the short short guys and. Don't have much muscle. It's hard. Like I didn't want CM Punk to be a, to be champ at all. No, nah, he was good at talking. He was good on the mic. I, I don't want him to be a champ. I, 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 when you come from a rock, you can't go to CM Punk. Hey, put that on the t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> put that on the t-shirt. <laughs> um, I can agree to a point, but I don't know. Look at Seth Rollins. He's not like the biggest guy, yeah. but I feel like he's amazing on the mic. Mm. He has great ring uh, uh, capability. I say here first, definitely, he's gonna go down as someone who's gonna be. Ah, uh, Seth Rollins. Yeah, I like yeah. him now because uh, you look at the new talent now; they're definitely pushing them. And Seth, I definitely, I definitely think he has the mm. the traits to be someone legendary. Mm. Not Roman though. Roman's okay. No, let him go heel, and I reckon you'll see a difference. I don't know why Vince is holding back. Yeah, let I him take out the Undertaker in a bad way. See, the, the, they they had the moment. They yeah, had yeah, the yeah, moment. Yeah, you yeah. like all right. No one liked. Everyone was screaming. Yeah. This is the great thing about live crowds. Everyone was screaming the roar after WrestleMania. Fuck you. Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> Go back home. <laughs> Go back home. Yeah. And I love that though. <laughs> do you um do you reckon Stone Cold should have retired um with The Rock? As in like you know when his last match was against The Rock, Rock Three, mm. at WrestleMania. Um, do you reckon that should have been in the last match? He was still even like you saw him in the documentary. Yeah. He looks good still. Yeah, he still looks good. Um, 
don't it wasn't know. a bad match though. Uh, I yeah, don't think he. I don't think he should have retired then. I th- I think he he should have kept going. Like got a few surgeries more, kept going a bit. Yeah. Had a background. Um, you know. You sound like, like Vince McMahon, bro. Like have a few surgeries, you you'll be <laughs> fine. You'll be fine. No, I just thought he had so much more in him. Yeah, because he's see like that. Larry Bird of the NBA. He he had more years in him. Um, it was just due to injury that held him back. So I think it was that of money. I'll, I'll say that. I think it was a bit of money as well. Mm. You know. But because he's he's one of the people that can definitely push for a bigger paycheck. How does he get money now? He uh, I want to know. He he wasn't working for WWF for a while. When he retired, no. So he, ha- he just lived off whatever he made. Yeah, because he was the highest paid wrestler at yeah. one stage yeah. because of all his merchandise. Yeah, a lot of wrestlers. So, uh, John Cena, Rock, Stone Cold, CM Punk. The reason why CM Punk was so pushed because his merchandise sold so much. Same with Rey Mysterio, like those masks and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Brock as well. You get pushed a lot if your merchandise is just getting sold out. Yeah. I can I can understand. As a as, like an, on a business point, yeah, you know, you'd want to push that person. Sure. You don't want to like limit to that person. Um I think that's the reason why um Just lost what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, they push people who like sell the most merchandise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and yeah, that's the reason why. That's why I think Stone Cold. Yeah, I got it now. <laughs> that's why I think Stone Cold. How Stone Cold lived off from his merchandise. He does podcasts. Yeah, and, and they do get like they do get like it's a ri- ten thousand each. Yeah, and they and he mainly just talks about wrestling. Yeah, like I definitely tune into that. So I I get that. That's probably so how the ones that are on Broken Skull on WWE Network. He has a lot more on yeah, like yeah. on audio. Just on audio, yeah. But, okay. but he has like a whole bunch. It's not even just WWE superstars. I think, I think the ones on WWE Network that I've watched are like all-time greats. Yeah, they are. They are. But some of them, like some of them are just, um, you could tell you could tell that he's not limited when he goes on his one when it was on audio. Oh. So when he when he talked to when Paul Heyman was out of w, uh, WWE for like. I think it was five years. Yep. They are. Uh, he asked questions like, "What do you think of WWE's product now?" Mm. And you hear Paul Heyman like, "I think it's trash now." Yeah, yeah. And yeah. he's like, "What's missing?" It's just like what they're not doing, and that, and it's just very, it's very just like it's not limited, and like they swear That's and everything. Good. Yeah, but in d- you can see in the WWE network, he's not, he's still up front, mm. but I think there's limited like, are you gonna say something bad about Vince? Yeah, yeah. No, I definitely think. Um, well, going back to what you said about Stone Cold, I think he had a lot more years in him. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, as a young kid, to be honest, thinking and looking back, I was very confused as to why he was gone. I didn't know the whole, I just thought you're a wrestler until you're old and then that's it. I never thought about the the injuries. I never thought about them being a person, having a life outside of the ring. I just thought once yeah. they're old, that's when they're done. But then I never understood why Stone Cold was out when I was younger. But yeah, I always thought he had more years in him. Yeah. Well, he was, I think he retired pretty young when you think about it. Yeah, he, he retired very young. Yeah. Because um, he still looks the same, kind of. <laughs> kind of. I think like a little bit of a beer belly, yeah. but actually, I think not, he's, he's not the same age as Undertaker. So if you think about Undertaker still going at 2020 and Austin finished at 03, 17 years ago. So he was in his 30s. Yeah, he was heaps young. <laughs> but how old's how The Rock? The Rock now? He's, he's, I know he's in his 40s. Yeah. 45? Yeah. Maybe even a bit older than 45. Man, you, you look at Stone Cold, Taker, and um, The Rock. You could tell, like, who's aged the most. Like, mm. Taker looks like an old man. Yeah. That's but he has put in more work. Like yeah, more, mi- more mileage. Crazy, more, a lot more mileage. Rock's still looking like a superstar. Like, he looks... That's yeah. just The Rock. He, you know what? He it's just looks rock. like The Rock. He just looks like The Rock. Yeah. Same as Stone Cold as well. Black, uh, don't, black don't crack. 100%. 100%. Hundred percent, Islander as well. Even yeah, like f- Asians and fillers will grow up and not <laughs> and look young until they're forty, fifty. Then, yeah. then they crack at like fifty five. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still half, so it's fine. <laughs> Here we go. He's gonna say how he's where he's from and shit. They put, you know what? I feel like they they do have a lot of Islanders though in um, WWE. Yeah, I th- it's crazy. Remember we were talking about. Those two girls that came out, the Divas, and they're from Australia. Yeah. And then, um, and then you yeah. told me there was like a former NRL player. And I was just, these new guys, I have no clue about. But it was so crazy that these guys are full Aussie. And no, you can hear and it on, on, on the mic. You can hear like the accent and everything. It's cool. But, but you love that though. It's, it's cool. Because like, it's it's cool. like, cool. we, cool. we have something like that. It's cool. It's like 
It's like when Batista won. It's like when Batista became big. It's like we have an Asian, a world champion Asian, Filipino to be exact. He's half cast. No, no, so no, just no, like no. He's Filipino. He's got a flag on him. Yeah, yeah, he's half cast, though, <laughs> like me. <laughs> um, no, nah, I, I, I love it, but they're not really pushing that many. Like they, they have Asian stars, but I don't feel like no, uh, it's no one's reached Batista's level. No. You know what? Batista should get more credit, man. He, he, like. He's now a movie star. Yeah, 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 I don't yeah, even talk about good. the Guardians. He's yeah. been in a few other movies. He's like, like he, stuff. and then he came back to wrestling. Shout out Batista. Shout out being a Filipino that has, um, you know, catapulted outside into the, into Hollywood. So a lot of respect. Yeah. And I'll be there soon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> What would be your move though? What would be a special move? Um, no. <laughs> Remember how we were talking about should I get on the road so we go into wrestling? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll just. I, I didn't know what's his name. Um, Seth Rollins did the pedigree now. Oh, he did. Not anymore though. Oh, you oh, know he's back to I the curb stomp. <laughs> oh, this guy. <laughs> 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 you ain't got the charisma. You can't if you're listening, slide, I did bro. the <laughs> the, uh, the people's elbow. What do I feel like when you're at full force when you're training people when they're oh, just no, like no, dead no, on the floor? No, 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 you're, no, you're, no. you're gonna go like just like <laughs> just like with your legs just kicking on the side. I should do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, all right. Well, is that it? The time? No, I is think that was time? we've we've covered everything that we wanted to talk about today. We had a great episode. Had a good laughs. Um, you did hear it here first. Randy versus Taker. We'll see you at WrestleMania. Randy versus Taker. We said it here first. Uh, Curious Canvas. S- Triple H, creative director. I know you can just bite it off us. And it, you know how great it'll be for um, for the ratings and for everything that will bring it. And for Taker's career. Yeah, for Taker's like career. Just, just and Randy Orton's career. It yeah, is the yeah. perfect move. So. You can take it, but make sure to shout out that you're watching the Curious Canvas podcast um, out of Australia and then you're like, yeah, I'm set on it because they convinced me. Yep, that's it. That so good. like I said, that's it. Follow, oh, 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 oh. follow us at, Curious f- at um, the dot Curious Canvas on Instagram. It'll be up soon. Yep. And follow us at Start Somewhere Media on both Facebook, Instagram and YouTube. That's it. As always.